Hi everyone! In this video, it's all about paired sample status. At the end of the video, you can identify the data assumptions for paired sample status, carry out the paired sample status using SPSS, and interpret the result of the test. The dependent status or paired sample status compares the means between two related groups and the same continuous dependent variable. For example, you could use a dependent status to understand whether there was a difference in a smoker's daily cigarette consumption before and after a six-week six hypnotherapy program. Here are the assumptions for our data set before using paired sample status. The dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale that is in interval or ratio. Examples of data under this level are revision time, measured in hours, intelligence, measured using IQ score, exam performance measured from 0 to 100, and weight measured in kilogram. Second assumption is the dependent variable, I'm sorry, the independent variable should consist of two categorical related groups or match pairs. Related groups indicate that the same subjects are present in both groups. The reason that it is possible to have the same subjects in each group is because each subject has been measured on two different occasions and the same dependent variables. For example, you might have measured 10 individuals' performance in a spelling test. That's actually the dependent variable before and after they underwent a new form of computerized teaching method to improve spelling. You would like to know if the computer training improved their spelling performance. Third assumption, there should be no significant outliers in the differences between the two related groups. Outliers are simply single data points within your data that do not follow the usual pattern. Fourth assumption, the distribution of the differences in the dependent variable between the two related groups should be approximately normally distributed. Okay, we assume that all those uh, assumptions for Paired sample status are actually satisfied, uh, satisfied by this uh, data set, our example. So, sample research problem. A teacher researcher wants to determine the effectiveness of flipped classroom approach in enhancing the students' conceptual understanding of certain topics in math. He decides to employ the approach to his class of 40 students. He, administered, he administers a test before and after employing the said approach and then he compares the results to determine whether a student's conceptual understanding is enhanced. For our hypothesis, we can state them as for null HO, this the the flip classroom approach do not do not enhance a students' conceptual understanding of certain topics in math. For the alternative hypothesis, the flipped classroom approach enhances a students' conceptual understanding of certain topics in mathematics. For our statement of the problem, we have is there a significant difference in the student's conceptual understanding of math before and after the implementation of flipped classroom approach? For our formal hypothesis, which can be written in our manuscript, 
For now, there is no significant difference in the student's conceptual understanding of math before and after the implementation of flipped classroom approach. For the alternative, there is a significant difference in the student's conceptual understanding of math before and after the implementation of flipped classroom approach. Okay, so we have here a sample uh, data set. So to organize our uh, data set, so we have here, for example, uh, 40 participants in our research. So we have here 40, 1 to 40, and these are their corresponding scores during the pretest and the post-test phase of your research. Okay, so that's how you organize your data. And now, we're going to treat this using a paired sample t-test, okay, with the application of our software, SPSS. So, we organize our data, okay, in a Microsoft Excel like this. So, you have the student number, that's 1 to 40, and this is their score during the pretest. So, before the implementation of the set approach, the flip classroom. And then after the flip classroom, you give another or similar test with the post test. And this is their scores, corresponding scores of the same student. Okay. So uh, to treat this data using our software, we may copy and paste this data in our SPSS. So we start with this value here. And then you drag this one to highlight all the data. And then you right click in any part of the highlighted uh, data and then you copy and then you proceed to SPSS so make sure uh, you click on data view here okay so that's where you can actually input our data click on the first cell right click and then you paste the copy data from the Excel so that's it that's our data now in our SPSS so the next thing is to change the variable name here. As you can see, the default name is var1 and var2. So we need to change that by clicking this view here, the variable view. So click this part here below it. Okay, and then you have here now to change the variable name. We have the first one. It's actually the pre test course. Okay. And the second one is actually the post-test score. Okay, so you change the variable name and the level of measurements. So we know that pretest score is actually interval or ratio, and that means it's scale. And also for post-test, it's a ratio, so it's a scale, under scale. Okay, so that's it. That's how to input our uh, data in SPSS, uh, data from Excel to SPSS, okay, by using copy and paste. Okay, now we're going to treat it using the per example t-test. So you just follow these steps. You need to click analyze. So click and analyze here on the menu bar. And then you point to compare means. And as you can see under compare means, you have the choices here. You choose paired sample status. Click on paired sample status, and then a dialog box will appear. And what are the pairs to be compared? You have the pretest scores, so you have to click on that and click this arrow here, and it should be paired to post test scores. So click on post the score, and then you need to click this arrow here, and that's it. You click on option. If you use 1% uh, level significance, change this to 99. And since we're using 5%, so that's okay, 95% here. And then you click OK. And we have the output. So this is the uh, output of SPSS. Okay, so we're now ready to actually uh, convert this into a table ready for the presentation of data in our manuscript. Okay, so this is the SPSS output and what are the values here needed for our table. So we have it here. 
So our table should be like this. We have the test score as to pre-test and post-test. The second column will be the mean. The third column will be for the standard deviation, the computed value T, the probability value, and our decision. So where are we going to get those values? We have here for the pre-test score and the post-test score, the mean is here. And then you need you may actually uh, round it off to two decimal places. For the SD or standard deviation, you may copy these values here and round it off to three decimal values. And what where is the com computed value or the t t statistic or test statistic? Okay, t value. You have this uh, value here, negative fifteen point two seven four, and the probability value is the the one with the word sig here. That's point zero zero zero, or it can be written as zero point zero zero zero. And what will be the decision? I hope you still remember the decision. Okay, so since the p-value is less than 0 0.05 level of significance, we need to reject H O. Okay, so let's continue with the interpretation of the table. So we may actually write the title first. Table 1, significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores. Okay. So using APA format to discuss or to explain the table, we have this. With T38, is the degree of freedom, is equal to negative 15.274 and the probability value P is 0 0.000. This study found that the flipped classroom approach had statistically significantly enhanced students conceptual understanding of math topics okay so we have here the pretest scores and the post -test scores from 15.45 plus minus 5 to 28.45 plus minus uh, 8.13 that's the standard deviation and you can also uh, include here the verbal interpretation of this um, scores here whether it's satisfactory to excellent or maybe good to very satisfactory okay and for another format or way of interpreting the table you can have this as shown on table one the computed value t is equal to negative 15.274 and the probability value p is equal to 0, 0.00 this is less than 0 0.05 level of significance indicate that there is significant difference between the students pre-test and post-test scores this implies that the flipped classroom approach is effective in enhancing students conceptual understanding of math topics And that's all, my dear students. Thank you for watching. This is Rogan Mabalo. See you in my next video. Bye!